It's time for another edition of Saturday with Seniors. Actually, part two. Sandy Gilbert joined us last Saturday, and we had so much to talk about that we carried it into this week. So 77-year-old Sandy Gilbert with all types of neat stories. You don't want to miss it. Let me first tell you, it is brought to you by Eisenhower's Tiger County, Harley-Davidson, South Mansfield. Motorcycles, they got them. Need an inspection done? They inspect Harleys and all brands of motorcycles. So if you need an inspection done, you can head on down there for that. Need any service work done? They can take care of that too. All at Eisenhower's, South Mansfield. What else do you remember? Any stories about being a kid you remember or funny things that happened or Mm -hmm. things you got in trouble for? or early jobs you had? Well, I had a babysitting job. And when I worked for Lynn, the kids of the people I babysat for, they all lived out of town, but they had a life insurance policy and the father died and they all came in. And I probably made $10 a week when I babysat for them. Three kids. Yep. And they were, they were <laughs> a handful. That's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they were a handful. <laughs> and the one girl said to me, she said, you know, you're the only babysitter that ever spanked me. <laughs> and I said, oh, I didn't remember spanking her. I mean, I was just a teenager, so probably. I didn't probably beat her or anything. Yeah. <laughs> but um, my sisters helped a lot uh, more in the barn than I did. I hated to go in the barn because it made my hair stink. <laughs> now, you, all you had to do is step inside the door. Yeah. And you smelled like the barn. And my dad was pretty careful. You know, some farmers' houses smell bad. I had cousins who lived in Rochester. And when they would come, they loved that smell. But I didn't ever want to go in the barn because I didn't want to get that they smell on me. To you. <laughs> yeah. So were you married? Are you married? I was married. Yep. My husband passed away. Pancreatic cancer. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yep. About in 2017. Uh-huh. So I'm a widow. When did you meet your husband? Um, right. In school. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, he, he was a yeah. couple years ahead of me in school. So your there. first boyfriend? Oh. Uh, um, much. No, he wasn't my first boyfriend. I mean, I had a boyfriend when I was in sixth grade. I had him for a couple of years, I think. I mean, you know, we were just yeah. kids, but he just passed away a little bit ago. He lived in California now. And I had uh, a couple of other ones along the way. Not all uh, <laughs> upstanding citizens that my mom and dad liked. <laughs> you, you live and learn as you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so what was your first real, besides babysitting, what was like your first real job um, out of school? Well, I worked for my husband's father for a little while. That was later. But I went to work for Maria Midland Bank right out of school. And my mom and dad thought that was the most wonderful. I mean, they wanted me to go to college. But of course, I was in love and I didn't want to go to college. And so I went and applied for a job and I got it right away. And I made $50 a week. I mean, and I guess that was too bad for back then. But this is the bank in Lawrence. Maria Midland in Uh, Elmira. Elmira, okay. So you were commuting all the way to Elmira. Well, I rode with a fellow that lived on another road over the hill from us. He picked me up every day and um, dropped me off. He worked at Elm Chevrolet and um, I worked there for a long time off and on. My mom and dad thought it was wonderful. That's a prestigious job and you know, they didn't pay well, but it was prestigious, they thought. And I worked there for a couple of years, different departments. I started out in bookkeeping. That's where everybody started and then I did several things. And then I worked part-time for a little while. I left there because my husband went into the army and he had his basic training and then he lived in Georgia for a a short time before he got sent over to Thailand. And so I left there. I gave him my notice, probably not a long notice, and said I was leaving. And of course, they weren't happy because I was leaving. But I left and I went down there. And I think we were only there for like maybe four months. And then he got his orders to go to Thailand. So I came home and he still stayed there because the orders didn't come through as they should have. And then as soon as I got home, they knew I was home. And my old boss called me to see if I wanted to come back to work. And I said, yes, I'd go back to work. So I went back to work and I worked there a few more years. Even after my kids were born, I worked worked part-time. I worked in several of the branches. And then I decided I wasn't going to work anymore. So I stopped. And one day I got a call from him and he had become the um, human services guy. And he just got the job and he wanted me to come and work with him. He wanted me to come in and talk to him. I didn't know what it was, you know, if he just wanted it, we just going to chat. But I went in and he wanted me to go to work, but he wanted me full-time and I didn't want to commit to that. So I did not go there. And then I went to work at the school in the cafeteria. That was a good job for me. I mean, I won't Mostly worked a cash register and took the money. And then I went to work for Lynn in 1996. And I worked Lynn there. Henry and Tyoga. Yep. And then I worked about, there for about yeah. 23 years before he passed away. And right. now I yep. work part time for Ken Leone, but it's a long drive. 
Yeah, for you down there. Yep. So you remember your first time going to McDonald's? Oh my gosh, no, I don't. <laughs> but I know Lynn talked about, he remembers when they opened the first McDonald's. Yep, it's about 40 years ago while the one in Wellsboro opened, almost 40 years ago. It doesn't seem and possible. It changed the whole what town, would, I guess. Yeah, what would we have done? I mean, if these kids had to go back and they couldn't go to Pizza Hut or McDonald's, that they do. Some of the adults, my kids, mm-hmm. my daughter cooks a lot, but my son and his wife, they live in North Carolina, Bojangles and McDonald's and Chick-fil-A. They don't cook much anymore. I mean, they have a grill. It's, a, it's grill. a lost art. I know. You I know. know. I, people, uh, the younger uh, generation, a lot of them don't know how to cook. They don't have even basic home economic classes, right, I don't think, right. in school. They have electives, right. but yeah. you know, are using an iron. How many kids graduating school know how to iron a oh shirt? Oh, my gosh. I know. I don't iron anymore much. You, you know? turned in your iron, huh? <laughs> well, I have it, and I use it once in a yeah. while, but I try not to use it any more than I have to. I couldn't do a thing when I left home. My mom never made me do a thing at home. No. Wash the dishes mm-hmm. was all. That was and it. my sisters always laugh because they say, yeah, she was there taking our plate before we even finish because she had a date and she wanted to get the dishes done. <laughs> <laughs> gravity to gravity. Yeah, yeah. There was so was he have a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sewing's another one of those things too, uh, that pretty much every mom had a sewing machine and knew right. how to use them when I was a kid and I don't think ten percent of the people under thirty have a sewing machine these no. days. Now they know how to use dishwashers and automatic washers uh, yeah. and everything automatic now. Mm-hmm. Put it in and push a button and it goes. I know. Wait, did your family take a lot of family photos when you were a kid? No, no. We, obviously we had no cell phones then right. we were using the old no, they did not take a lot of photos. Well, that's too bad. So you and we took some, um, we took my mom and dad to Disney and we took a bunch of pictures, but it was an old camera and they fade, mm-hmm. you know, so they're not great. Yeah. You still have the negatives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we still, I mean, I have some pictures of like when I was a, yeah. a child. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going through all my parents' old negatives, the eight millimeter films and the, and the, uh-huh. uh, 35 millimeter pictures and I bought a digitizer where you can put them in. They're not very expensive and you can look at the old pictures. Oh, wow. And it's really, and they're, they're very sharp when you look at the negatives uh, and you can print them or, yeah. or digitize uh, yeah. them. But I haven't had a ch- I have yeah. been busy. Uh, so if you got you know, some, I'll lend if you I mine. Retire, <laughs> if I retire, I'll do it, but I don't know if I'll ever retire or not, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're getting actually close to the end of the show. Any other things you want to mention or anything or things mm, that... I can't think of anything. I'm sure when I leave here, I'll say, oh, oh there's, I there's a million this. things to talk about from, you know, your phone. Being knowing how to use a rotary phone. To, oh my gosh! Yes, yes. And we were on a party. We were on a party line, and you went to pick it up. And if somebody else was on there, you mm-hmm. couldn't use it, but you could listen to their conversation so if you, know you wanted what to. you know is. Yeah, <laughs> that's a word that I've heard a few times on the interviewing people on the show, oh, but yeah? I never knew until I started. Oh gosh! It. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I remember when we got our first TV, black and white, kind of green and white. Was I it think one of those I, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, it was a regular square one, a normal mm-hmm. looking TV. I think it was in like second or third grade. I remember we got this TV and it was black and white, you know, and we didn't watch it all the time. I mean, it wasn't like today, you know, where we just sat in there and watched it all the time. 78 channels on cable TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Two channels, maybe. And <laughs> they went off the and they went off at 11 at night or something like that. This ends our broadcast day. <laughs> yeah. And my dad and some of his friends and family, they always wanted to get together on Saturday nights because they had this wrestling thing on there. You know how fake wrestling is today. Mm-hmm. I think it was yeah. probably the same back then, but they just got a must be got a real kick out of it because they'd get together on Saturday nights sometimes and watch that. Watch them. Yep. Hit each other with chairs and yep. jump off the top yep. wire. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I think we had maybe one brand new car when I was a kid. It was like a 55 Chevy. You know, I can't remember a lot. I thought I would always remember everything. I wish I would have journaled and written everything down because the, even the little things, you know, like did we have a cafeteria in our two-room school? What did we do for lunch? You yeah. know? Yeah. I don't know. It's probably some old pictures online of the school that would jog a few memories. Yeah, you, I know. I know. If you go That's online right. and, That's right. It probably and is. see what you remember. Were you around in the 70s? Two flood when that oh, happened? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, I was. So you saw the devastation. I saw Tioga, it was Lawrenceville, awful. Yeah. Uh, Nelson. It was uh, awful. Yeah. Yes. It was a terrible thing. It was electric out for for weeks? I looked at the pictures and I'm like, how I do they even did, get these grocery stores open again that were three feet in water? I don't know. You know, I remember I was working at the bank at that time and I was going to have a bridal shower for a friend of mine the night before the flood and it was raining a lot and it was getting, you know, near our house and stuff was getting, so ditches were getting full and stuff. And I remember we canceled it, decided to move it to another day. We went to bed that night. In the morning when we woke up, I think it was my husband's dad that called and said, you don't need to go to work today. And I said, what? 
And they said, everything's flooded. You know, in the bank, I remember the bank, there's all, all the records and everything. And we're in the basement, a lot of them, and they were all flooded. Absolutely. Yes. And the, the well fire in uh, Tioga? When... I don't remember a lot about that, but I remember that there was one. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if- Flames are shooting 100 feet in the air until yeah. they got people in from Texas yep. to, to put that thing out. It's a wonder we don't have that now with all the new gas wells. This is a funny catch on fire. You know? Yeah, don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I guess we're just more careful. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm not know, really exactly you know, sure. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been wonderful. Oh, and good. You, well, I, I enjoyed it, too. You, and it brings back a lot of memories that I wouldn't even think about, you know? Yeah. I wouldn't think about that two-room school, and I was thinking about it last night. I should have done a little research, and then I would have known a little more about what was going on. But, you know, there's not a lot of people my age that I can contact that know. In Lawrenceville, probably, I don't know how many kids were in our class, because there was a school in Tioga, and there was one in Millerton. And, and Elkland, so you were really surrounded yeah. by schools. So, you know, I don't know how many kids, I don't know who I could call. There might be a couple that are still living and healthy and could maybe remember to see, you know, well, do you remember the two from school, you know? Who was the other teacher? I remember it was a Mrs. Hughes and there was, I think the other one was a Mrs. Bostwick, but I'm not sure. Yep. Well, maybe someone listening can give us a call. We'll <laughs> yeah, pass it yeah, along. that or would be cool. If you see Sandy Gilbert, you'll let yeah. her know, refresh her, it, re- her refresh memory my, on there. Yeah, refresh me. Yeah. So you never had to wear the dunce cap in school, right? Oh, you're, you're I was the, a good kid. You're the good kid. I remember the fourth grade teacher had, I think she slapped our knuckles once. We had double seats in fourth grade. There were like the school seats, only there were two. Mm-hmm. There was like a bench and then a desk and two people could sit on them. Imagine that. Yeah. Well, that'd be nice for kids, wouldn't it? I'd probably the poor teacher would have to be back there all the time. But I'm Trying to um, figure out exactly. I can sit this one with that yeah, one because they I don't know. get along. Don't sit two of them work. together. Yeah, They'll yeah. be talking all the time. Yeah. These two will be a uh, problem. Yeah, yep. Yep. And the old whacking on the knuckles happened in the school too. Huh? Yeah. Ruler was that? or the? Path? It was a ruler. And you know that that teacher was, her name was Adeline Butler, B-U-T-L-A. And she was hard of hearing. I remember she had bright red hair. She was an older lady when I had her, but most of the teachers were older. Not a lot of young ones back then, you know? Now they can't get them, I guess, anyway, but yeah. half the time. And th- I think how many schools we had, how many teachers we had. You go a little before your days and there was three schoolhouses, four in every one of what? our right. 30 or 40, how many towns you have in Tyler County? Right. Yep. That's right. Crazy time. So would you rather grow up in the times you did or or now if you mm, uh, probably some of both but I think that we everybody was a lot less stressed and things were much more laid back then. I mean, and, and it's probably just a combination of there's so many more people now. I mean, on my on the road I live on, there mm-hmm. you know there weren't a lot of houses. It's all to run in there. It's not a dirt road. There weren't a lot of houses, and you knew the name of everybody that lived down there. But now there are a lot of houses and trailers and yep. other things. People yeah. just live in their house, get in their car like it's an extension of their house, and go somewhere I, else I and know. go. They, I know. I, I know. drive th- drive through like a town, Wellsboro, Manso, Blossom or whatever and look around and you don't see kids out on right like a we talk about that too you know that when i was a, there would be kids playing ball in the yard we playing hopscotch we'd right. be out in our bicycles they're just not out there tree, they're tree inside port. playing on their yeah. machines i guess yeah just i mean like and the, i know my time. granddaughters they go to dance and they go to other things when i was in school if you were a girl the only thing you could do was cheerlead there, was, there were no basketball i don't remember any basketball teams or any kind of sports teams for girls no volleyball i don't remember anybody playing volleyball We had gymnastics for a couple of years, and then we had cheerleading. So Mm -hmm. that's what everybody, all the girls wanted to do. But you had to try out, and it was only, you know, a few got chosen. So, yeah. And the Green Shingles was a a A popular place when people were 18 years old that lived near the border. Yep, it sure was. Any stories? No, no, I didn't. My mom wouldn't even hardly let me go. She didn't like it when I wanted to be a cheerleader because she didn't like me riding on the bus with the boys. The basketball team rode on the bus. She was so protective of me because I was the oldest. Yeah. And then my sisters could do anything they wanted. Wanted. They realized, yeah. Yeah that, yeah. that still happens now with every firstborn kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they had a roller skating bus, and a lot of kids rode it to Mansfield, to the roller skating rink. Uh, there's a roller skating rink in Tioga, but I can't remember that much. I remember that there was a roller skating bus that took kids to Mansfield every Friday night, and I wanted to go, and I, my mom would never let me. I never got to go on it, not even mm-hmm. once. And it was a whole different route to go to... Uh, to Mansfield, Mansfield yes. Because yes, you sure went was. through downtown yep. Tioga and then yep. went right through where the dam is. And now. I remember when we, some of our first dates, we went to eat at some of those motels that were up there on the... Yeah, when you were going over the Mill uh, Cove Bridge, there were yep. those real high, two high bridges to the west where the big lake is down yep. below. There was an intersection with, a, I guess, a pallet factory and a motel yep. and a restaurant. Yeah, and... they were. And as you go up the hill, well, it wouldn't probably even be the same hill now, but there were a couple of hotels or motels up there that had pretty decent restaurants, you know? Yeah. It's a major change when you look at 
at it, Mansfield to Tioga used to be five miles apart. Mm -hmm. And then when Route 15 went around, the lake went in in 72, you had to now go all the way up uh, past Tioga and all uh -huh. the way back. And it yeah. almost doubled the distance I know. to get there. And they're always working on that road. I always wonder how... They're going to be done someday. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why, why are they working on this again this year? They worked on it last year. How much work can you do on it, you know? Nothing lasts uh, like it used to, I no, guess. No, I guess not. And uh, I guess it's job security for somebody, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Was there an old home days in Lawrenceville when you were a kid? Did everyone get together or a big mm. summer festival? I can't remember ever... <laughs> You know, Halloween was a big deal. And I would go to my friends because I had friends that lived in Lawrenceville and you could walk around town. For me, I know my mom hated it. And when I had kids, I didn't like it either because you dig everything out of your closets and try to come up with costumes and then you got to put it all back away. <laughs> and the kids would be t little and they'd be crying because they fell in the ditch when they got out. <laughs> and whatever. Yeah. No, I, I don't remember any big celebrations. You know, we were kind of shielded. We didn't. And there wasn't a lot mm -hmm. of social no social time activities. of the Grange, maybe your parents members they were members but probably the biggest thing was you know we always had a family reunion every summer usually at either my grandmother's or my aunt had yeah. it sometimes too and you know you got together and everybody came i mean yeah. all your cousins and aunts and uncles now in the day not just the yeah meal and go you know and yeah. they somebody maybe bring watermelon somebody bring ice cream and you'd be there for the whole day mm -hmm. now i mean we don't even have reunions anymore um but now if they have reunions only a few people show up that's too bad that it is it is and and i said you that, know actually that that really my family was like that too and i'm seeing that happen my family when i go back for family parties it used to be so big and right. people spend so much time it was an open house for the day right it was so and, fun and you got to know your cousins and yeah, and I said, you know, nowadays kids don't even know their cousins. Yeah, yeah. Especially, I, I mean, their first cousins. My, cousins. my cousins were one next right. to my sister. As they far used, as knowing. To, they used to, right? They used to always. I mean, they'd come to the house, you know, and the boys were older, and they'd throw our shoes up on the roof, and mm -hmm. you know, all just little things, you know, that you can remember. And nowadays, everybody's so busy. That's why I, I prefer back when I was growing up. And I know probably nobody, none of the people nowadays would say, oh, there's nothing to do back then, you know. But somehow, I don't know there was something to do yeah, i wasn't I there back then but i was before the days of computers and video yeah. games and i never got i don't ever remember getting bored ever except like i said i wanted to be downtown because all yeah. my friends that i had downtown in lawrenceville and tioga they had bikes and they could ride around i, I never challenge living in the country i then, never learned to ride yeah because we were it was a hilly place where we were and i never learned to ride bike it probably until i was in fifth or sixth grade and i learned at my grandmother's because she lived on a more flat main road and we used to i mean in the winter time like i said you know we could ride our sleds from the top of the hill all the way to the end of the road pretty much and probably never our car would come and now you'd have to get off the road all the time for a car. When I walk the dog at certain times, I spend more time on the side of the road than I do walking in the mm -hmm. on the road. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Sandy. Appreciate all okay. that. Okay. You're welcome. Very interesting information. Yep. It was, and... it was very t interesting talking to you. Well, thank you. Uh, we're uh, KC 101. So I'm brought to you by Eisenhower's Tower County Harley Davidson. We thank them for their sponsor. And if you grew up in our area and you wouldn't mind sharing your story, and everybody's got one. I don't care who you are. It's, <laughs> if you lived 60, 70, 80 years ago, you lived a whole different life than now. Now and it's it's fascinating to hear about all that so 